Today a common danger we incur. Now Tigalinus, it behooves us then today to seek a common remedy. And what? Fearest thou, Octavia? Certainly not her allurements. Hitherto have mine prevailed in Nero's eyes. I apprehend her feigned affection, her feigned gentleness. The arts of Seneca and his reproaches, the violence of the people, the remorse of Nero, these I fear. I was enamored of thyself alone, not of thy throne. And still, alas, I am the love, not of the monarch of the world, but of my much-loved Nero, was to me an irresistible enticement. <laughs> <laughs> she will not see, blinded by unjust jealousy, the truth. I love her only. This she... I have said to her, but who could better calm the bitter pangs of jealous fear than a beloved lover? Is it needful that I, by proof, legitimate my will? It is but too needful. Thou canst not yet hold the impious multitude in the contempt which it deserves. Tis true, it held its peace at Agrippina's and at Claudius's pyres, that of Britannicus it saw in silence, in silence. Yet, at Octavius' fate, it dares today murmur and weep, <laughs> reveal Octavius' crimes, and all men will be mute. I never loved her. She evermore displeased and wearied me. She had the boldness to lament her brother. I saw her too implicitly obey the turbulent Agrippina. Off to me, I heard her name, her sceptered ancestors. These are atrocious crimes, and they suffice. On her already have I sentence passed. To execute it, there is nothing wanting except her presence. That she is no more, Rome shall discover. This is the account which of my brothers I shall give to Rome. Why call it exile? <laughs> The soft companion, exquisite retreat. Good, good. Um, in their voluptuous wallowings, sheltered them. There, on the flowery. The fury glisten in thy eyes. Ah, oh, I too plainly see that thou dost hate me. More vehemently hate me than a husband for mere sterility could hate a wife. Behold me then, submissive to thy will. What shall I do? Speak, issue thy commands. Yet even in thy court, entirely wretched, thou canst not make me, if with my unfortunes I satisfy thy heart. Say, art thou happy? Reigns in thy heart a placid calm? Dost thou beside another spouse that tranquil sleep of which thou robbest me securely taste? Does that Palpea, whom, like me, thou hast not robbed of a brother more than did Octavia, ensure thy happiness? At what a price thou art? Fears the people. Fears the proud he is, yet hitherto the throne beneath him totters. Perhaps one day. Thou shalt be ere long the puny victim of my. Well, 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 what shall we do? What is thy sovereign will? What shall we do? The people must behold this there Octavia. Let her then be slain. See my defenseless bosom. If it pleases thee, slay me at once. Oh, may my blood appease thee. Show me to the inflamed multitude when dead. Thou wilt at once, by doing this, repress all culpable rejoicing. In my name, do thou go. Show thyself to them. What the people are, thou knowest well soon. The I... day too late will also come when thou wilt know. Thou thus request thy emperor's wife and tremble. Heed her not. She chooses well in thee her judge. What judge can she ever find more merciful? What punishment to who has betrayed my Nero's love? What punishment can I inflict than that of losing him eternally? What punishment to thee can be more light? That vulgar love which thou in vain concealest, thou hast obtained my free consent to publish. Yes, worthy mistress of Eucharist. I would worthily to him that be ends thee. What said she? That I love thee not? Thou knowest. Better than he thou knowest it. He would know it if he should lose the throne. Then would he fully behold thee as thou art. Keep thou to thy apartments. Go and let me no more hear thee. I hold Nero far, far more precious than the throne. If I feared on my own account to risk his safety, but... What dost thou suggest? Is Nero not the absolute lord of Rome? 
And shall he heed a vile and apprehensive multitude which silently and implicitly obey Tiberius and Vile slave, I was so long as I was silent. But now the day arises when I unloose to words ne'er heard before, my tongue no longer parasitical. Tremble, Nero, if thou slayest Octavia. To thee I do announce it. All her blood will fall again on thy devoted head. I've spoken. Sorry. Behoove me once to speak, thou wilt hereafter in reply bestow on me, and at thy greatest leisure, death. For words like thee, I'll make thee pay ere long. Oh, insolence! Then am I here of all men least the slave of every bragging till my army come? Of contradictory and diverse schemes on every side I have a stress, and those whom by a sudden blow I would overwhelm by long elaborate contrivances, and one by one I'm forced to immolate. Ought to do it, and I will. Oh, cease, cease! It was my business to gain time with time, and somewhat of it I have gained already. What fears thou now? Depend on it, we shall be triumphant. Oh, permit that I, if at thy feet I do not now expire. Give thee my last farewell. But, but sayest thou, arise, shall I leave? Thou were made obnoxious to repeated insults. Thou wert constrained even now to hear the impatience, the irreverent babblings of a Seneca. Thou seest clearly. I affright. Yes. But for me thou art so. Of another fear thou art not susceptible. Save me, pity bids thee. Oh, ye, I ye were willing now in such a short space. I have no sword with me, and instantly comes Nero. Ah, let me sooner die far away from me, but thus at least I carry to the tomb thy love with me entire. Let this suffice. My rage already is too much inflamed. Dismiss all projects of abandoning me. Rome and the world in heaven permit it not. Mine shalt thou always be this. Nero swears. Long live the emperor. 